again, it is a uh, mechanical type piece, so based off of that, trying to initially just start off with an elliptical shape. And if you start off with a square to build that up, that's, that's okay too. But the elliptical shape, trying to get you some of the freehand in there, starting off with the base, and then just extending it very much. So what does this look like? Something we've drawn before. When you go back to the pastry class, for example, all the cake and everything is fitting right inside there. So there's the overall shell of this uh, design, this character, this piece. Okay. <clears throat> Once you find that, then you can see the interior section. So if you clean this up, delineate it just a little bit better, section that off. There's your outside. Now you have to look at, say, like where the top of these cylindrical bearings fit in. So I just wrap that around. It has a base to it, kind of like the baseline and height line of the type. And that'll set that piece up. As you go from the front, if you just draw a single vertical line and let it rotate around, getting narrower together as it goes around this piece, piece getting closer together, you kind of have it pretty well set up. Just as you take a look at these, you have to say if that's the center, if that's going to be the break of it all, give it a thickness to it. And now you're spacing out the rectangular shapes that are going to wrap this right around itself. So now I have a little window here. And from this, I can put in the curve of that bearing. So once you get it, it's very much a pattern. drawing it across. So once I get the top view of, of that cylinder, it makes the rest relatively easy. As they wrap around, you're not seeing the entire cylinder because you have a little wall of the wheel bearing there wrapping itself around. So now you have that kind of laid out. The rest is pretty simple. It's just these two rims in here. One has a gap. You can see how it's curved over. So I'll lose that line, but this is the inside of that gap. And make it large enough so even though when you get into the detail, you have plenty of room to illustrate that section. So that's that top piece. I can make one more ring inside of it. And once I have that, I can establish that center piece. Now I made mine a little bit too shallow in order to find that big of a gap, so I might lose that section. Didn't want to, but that's where it is. Now the lighting of this is pretty much from the top down. But if I establish a little bit of the shading in there like that, that at least gets it started. And then <coughs> I take a little bit of a sharper pencil and go back and find some of this. Now <coughs> as you go through some of these pieces trying to set them up again with a straight edge to help you keep things aligned, it's always a good idea. Let's see, I can kind of go through. And as I know that, I can put a little effort on there as far as the shading. I can find that line and then just even shade it right across with that line. And the edge of the triangle. So instead of just redrawing it and then going back, I can do it right at the same time. So there's the one line. Start to put a little base tone. And you can see these vertical connections here. There's the edge. Kind of cut across. Now, if your sketchbook, I got a little bit of the metal part coming up. So when you look through this, the, the metallic shine of the chrome really lets itself through where it's a lot of vertical shaded lines. So use of a straight edge is actually just what you need. All the way across that piece. So that builds that up pretty quickly. <laughs> Oops. And then any part that comes down below this Heavy that up. 
this part that has the gap, you can see there's an airspace in there where you can see the other side of the bearing. And the picture that I'm showing, I kind of made it too tight. That's that piece. <clears throat> this part that wraps around it. Just trying to pinpoint it pretty good. And then this part is the rounded edge right there. And then you're trying to push the, push the uh, shading. I'm going around that edge. That shows that gap. And again, trying to find these curved edges. As you draw, you can still add some of the shading in there. It's almost like shading at the same time, putting in a slight detail in there. That built it up. And now I can go back in with a little more emphasis on the tone. But as the shine goes, there's that section. So this basic shape just has the metallic texture. So when you think a line shape, the value, the color of this is kind of silvery gray. Again, just kind of showing you this. This is the stump. It's just drawing it across this way. But it does give a nice pink. And then the part, parts that are up front are going to carry a lot of the detail foreground. This also has a little bit of tone in it. And then you can give it a little bit of a cast shadow. A little bit of a reflection. You're pretty much done on that one. Perfectly drawn. 